Hello and welcome to the awards ceremony for the Amanda Jones Awards for the Australian Society of Archivists. Welcome to everybody who's joined us. Um, I'm Louise Trott, I'm the Secretary of the Amanda Jones Awards and with me is Catherine Robinson, one of the three judges of the Amanda Jones Awards. Catherine and I are going to um, share the task of announcing the awards. The way this um, event will run, I will do an acknowledgement of country, I will speak about Phyllis Manda Jones, and then we will start announcing the awards. Um, the IT people in the background have teed up all of the winners and they have their certificates with them. So when your award is announced um, and then the judges' comments will be read out, you will be there and you can be there with your certificate and wave your certificate and smile. And then you'll be shunted off <laughs> and, and the next award winners will appear. So I will start with an acknowledgement of country. The Australian Society of Archivists acknowledges the traditional owners of the lands from across Australia and the surrounding seas and recognise their continuing connection to land, water, culture and community. We pay our respects to the elders past and present. We honour your local community traditions of caring for archives and culture through country, through songs and stories. I am here in Wyong on the central coast of New South Wales, so I personally pay my respects to the Darking Jung people whose land I am on whilst participating in this meeting. I'd like to tell you a bit about Phyllis Manda Jones. There's an entry about her in the online Australian Dictionary of Biography. Every time I read this entry, I'm blown away yet again by how much Phyllis did for us, even though, of course, she was just living her life. But uh, so much of the strength of our profession sits upon her shoulders, as you will see. Phyllis was born in 1896, died in 1984. She was a librarian and an archivist, and she helped to establish the archival profession in Australia. The Australian Society of Archivists made her an honorary member in 1976, and in 1996 inaugurated the Manda Jones Awards. Phyllis was born in Homebush, Sydney. She was educated at the Abbotsley Girls' School and at the University of Sydney, where she took out a BA in 1917. She had a brief stint of teaching at Abbotsley in school and then tutored privately. In May 1925, she joined the staff of the Public Library of New South Wales as a library assistant, but by 1933, she was a fully qualified librarian. This is really interesting. During World War II, her knowledge of languages proved useful to the Department of the Army, which employed her on its censorship staff, and she assisted in the bibliographic work carried out by the Mitchell Library under the direction of Ida Leeson for the Allied Geographical Section. But by November 1946, she was appointed Mitchell Librarian, and she had responsibility for a library which also functioned as state archives that had experienced difficulties during the war years, the practices of which needed modernisation, and the staff of which was generally not equipped to deal with the problems confronting them. During 1948, she investigated archival practices and conservation techniques and explored the holdings of records relating to Australia in Britain, the United States of America and South America, and she attended the inaugural conference of the International Council on Archives. In 1949, she prepared a report about archives in New South Wales for a conference of Commonwealth and state authorities. And for many years, she was an examiner in bibliography and archives for registration examinations of the Library Association of Australia. Importantly, she helped to establish the archives section, which became 19, in 1975 became the Australian Society of Archivists, and she was co-editor of the first issue of the journal Archives and Manuscripts in 1955. In 1956, Manda Jones went to London to work on the records of the London Missionary Society and other papers. In the following year, she resigned as Mitchell Librarian and became the State Public Library's Liaison Officer in London. In 1960, she took over the work of the Australian Joint Copying Project, a program initiated in 1945 for the copying of records of Australian and later Pacific interest in the United Kingdom. In 1964, she was appointed to direct the project, jointly administered by the Australian National University and the National Library of Australia, and how many people have benefited from that. 
She then returned to Australia and retired to Medindi in Adelaide. She was appointed an MBE in 1971. She was made a Fellow of the Library Association of Australia in 1963. As I mentioned before, the ASA made an honorary member and inaugurated the Amanda Jones Awards in 1996. Uh, Phyllis Amanda Jones died in 1984 at Prospect in Adelaide. So we have much to thank her for. Moving on to the awards. First, I would like to thank the three judges, Catherine Robinson, Prue Heath, and Sarah Lethbridge. You have no idea how much work it is to work your way through all of the publications that have been nominated. And thankfully, we get a lot of them. It's a humongous amount of work, not just to read them, but then to think about them and analyze them and synthesize them and compare them and then choose a winner and, and then write reports on it. It's a massive uh, gift to the ASA and to the members and to the winners. I'm also very grateful to the ASA office staff for the administrative support of the awards, to the organisers of this conference for giving us time for this event, and to the audiovisual support team uh, for making the technology work. Uh, there are 16 awards, uh, winners of awards in nine categories, and there are six commendations for four categories. The commendations are given when uh, the standard of the work is so high that the judges can't bear not to give something to that second uh, winner, and so they get a commendation. So Catherine and I will announce the winners alternately and read out the judges' comments. As I said before, please waive your award certificates, but unfortunately there's no time for acceptance speeches. Category 1A, uh, no award was made for this year because we didn't receive any uh, submissions. That is publication making the greatest contribution to the archives profession in Australia, written by or on behalf of a corporate body. So get out there and start writing that kind of thing. Category 1B is publication making the greatest contribution to the archives profession in Australia, written or edited by a person in their own right. And the winners of this award are Linda Barwick, Jennifer Green, Petronella Vazon Morel, who are joint editors for Archival Returns, Central Australia and Beyond. And the judges' comments are. This excellent collection of essays and case studies highlights a range of successful repatriation projects. The work uses a range of examples to draw out the complexities in negotiating and managing archival returns and the importance of ownership and control of knowledge and information about oneself and one's group and working with competing interests to achieve a successful repatriation of archival material. One of the strengths of this work is the rich perspectives provided by the authors who include archive users and Indigenous researchers. These perspectives will have a significant impact on the archival profession and navigating this complex area of practice. So congratulations to Linda, Jennifer and Petronella. Moving on to category 2A, the best publication that uses, features or interprets Australian archives, written by or on behalf of a corporate body. The winner of this category is Clive Smith on behalf of the Port Macquarie Historical Society for Return to Lake Innes, Journals and Letters written by Annabelle Innes. Um, the judges noted this is an excellent publication of a trans and a transcription of the journals and letters of Annabella in Innes, a significant archival collection inscribed on the UNESCO Memory of the World Register. The work is of a high standard and the well-designed format enables a reader to appreciate this amusing and discerning first-hand account of life in New South Wales in the 19th century. By publishing these archives, the author has made a highly significant archival record accessible to all researchers and a much wider audience. The journals and letters are enhanced by the contextual information included in the book and the detailed index. Congratulations, Clive. The next, category, uh, the next award is actually a commendation for category 2A. 
And this goes to Margaret Warburton and Joan Pope for the University of Western Australia and the Second World War Nominal Role Project. The judges commented, this well-designed publication features extensive archival research to document over 1,400 individuals listed on the Second World War nominal roll. Each entry includes date of birth and birthplace of the individual, date of death, connection with the University of Western Australia and its, and its affiliates, and the individual's service record. The work is interspersed by moving and, in, and useful biographies within the um, nominal role listing. This publication makes extensive use of the University of Western Australia's archives and other archival sources. It will be useful for family history researchers, military historians, those studying Western Australian society and UWA for many generations to come. Congratulations, Margaret and Joan. The next award is for category 2B. This is a winner. Best publication that uses features or interprets Australian archives written or edited by a person in their own right. And the winner of this award is James Keating for the publication Distant Sisters, Australasian Women and the International Struggle for the Vote, 1880 to 1914. And the judges say, this impressive work uses archives from many countries, including personal papers, suffrage periodicals, and archives of temperance and suffrage organisations to tell the story of women's suffrage in Australia and New Zealand, and how these suffrage networks influence the cause in the rest of the world. It overturns many earlier assumptions about Australasian involvement in the international women's suffrage movement. Archives are integral to this work. They are not just a source of facts, but are studied as artefacts themselves, with the author analysing and synthesising correspondence and periodicals and the way they were used by suffragists as a tool to communicate to a wide audience. This book is valuable for both its subject matter, but also the way in which it sheds light on previously little-known archival collections. This will be the go-to book on this topic for many years to come. Congratulations. James. The next award is in category 2B is a commendation. Best publication that uses features or interprets Australian archives written or edited by a person in their own right and the winner is Jenny Hocking for The Palace Letters. The judges comments are Archives are the star of this highly readable account of the landmark legal action to gain access to the correspondence between Sir John Kerr, the Governor General of Australia, and the Queen during the 1975 dismissal crisis, aka the Palace Letters. Archives are the subject, the source, and the context for this book. This work has been written for a wide audience and readers will gain an appreciation of archives as well as the complexities of accessing information and archives, intergovernmental relations, the Australian legal system and royal influence. Hocking is an excellent raconteur in telling of her struggles and battles to gain access to the correspondence between a Governor General and the Queen held by the National Archives of Australia. She also provides the reader with an excellent essay on the detail that the palace letters reveal about the dismissal of the Whitlam government in November 1975. It is a great and fascinating read. Congratulations, Jenny. Thank you. Um, moving on to category three. This is for the best finding aid to an archival collection held by an Australian institution or about Australia. And the winner of this category is the City of Sydney for the Archives Management System catalogue produced by the City of Sydney. And um, Janet Velata is going to accept the award on behalf of the City of Sydney. Congratulations. The judges noted catalogues are the major tool for the public to access archives. The various City of Sydney catalogues have been systematically redesigned into one catalogue with the user's experience central to design decisions. It is an excellent example of how the next generation of archival catalogues could work. From the main catalogue search engine, relevant material is easy to find for the casual user, but with full contextual information clearly provided for the more sophisticated user. The home page is visually appealing with key functions and areas of interest highlighted. Congratulations. 
Moving on to category four, best publication produced by an organization deemed eligible for category B, which is schools, religious and not for profits, non-profits. And the winner is Gareth Dyer, editor of the Scots College, Sydney. Uh, for the publication, Worthy of Our Forefathers, A History of the Scots College, Sydney. And the judges' comments are, a beautifully presented history of the Scots College produced for the school's 125th anniversary. It makes good use of the school's archives as a foundation for telling the history of the school. Biographies of key members of the community are interspersed with supporting archival images and high quality images of school objects. So congratulations, Gareth. The next category is category five, um, the best article or chapter about archives written by an Australian in an archives, records management, library or museum journal, or with an anthology, within an anthology or monograph. And the winner for category five is Joanne Evans, Frank Golding, Kate O'Neill, and Rachel Tapia for All I Want to Know is Who I Am, Archival Justice for Australian Care Leavers in David A. Wallace, Wendy M. Duff, Renee Saucier and Andrew Flynn's edited Archives, Record Keeping and Social Justice. The judges noted, this article critically examines the response of the Australian archival community to care leavers experiences in gaining access to the records about their lives while in care. While progress has been made, the article highlights important areas where the Australian archival profession could improve practice and provide better survivor-centred solutions. This is a very practical and moving article. The judges commend it to all Australian archivists and particularly to institutions and archivists involved with the needs of the care lever community. Congratulations, Joanne, Frank, Kate and Rachel. Um, we also had a commendation for category five. So best chapter or article about archives written by an Australian in an archives records management library or museum journal or within an anthology or monograph. And the winner, uh, the commendation goes to Michael Smith and Janet Velata for applying user-centered design to archives in archives and manuscripts, volume 48. Um, Janet's accepting um, the award on behalf of both her. And, oh, there's oh, Michael. There's Michael. <laughs> <laughs> A late appearance. Yes. Um, the judges noted this practical and interesting article is an excellent case study into the City of Sydney's redesign of their archival catalogue. A user-centred design approach was adopted. By sharing the analysis and methods, as well as feedback from user groups, this article will be of enormous benefit to other archives looking to upgrade their catalogue and wishing to ensure meaningful access for the public to complex con collections. Congratulations, Janet and Michael. Moving on to category six, best article or chapter about archives written by an Australian in a journal or a newspaper or within an anthology or monograph not primarily intended for archivists or records managers. And the winners are Michael Aird, Joanna Sassoon and David Trigger for their article from illustration to evidence, historical photographs and Aboriginal native title claims in Southeast Queensland, Australia, published in Anthropology and Photography, number 13, 2020. The judges said, this is a very important article for both researchers and archivists who want to promote photographic collections to a wider audience. The article emphasizes the value of photographs, long used to illustrate a point, but often overlooked as a source of evidence alongside other recorded information. The authors show how photographs can be used as evidence when the written record is lacking by showing the continuing presence of indigenous Australians in an area covered by a native title claim. This article should encourage researchers to look for evidence in photographic collections. Congratulations to all three of you. Thank you. And moving on to category seven. This um, is the category for the best academic work on archives or record keeping produced by. Ooh. 
just lost Catherine. I'll pick that up until Catherine can come back. The best academic work on archives or record keeping produced by a student in any Australia. Oh, she's back. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened there. Yeah. Um, and the winner for Category 7 is Kerry Wilson for Vic Vic Vicarious Trauma in Court Archives, an examination of the interactions with criminal court records for the Master of Information Studies, Records and Archives Management at Charles Sturt University in last year's program. Judges noted, this is an excellent work that examines the consequences for archivists of being exposed in their work to distressing material not usually seen by the public. This aspect of work can have long-term impact, but is not often discussed. The work, as in the essay, is well set out, clearly cited, and tackles an important subject for the well-being of archivists. Congratulations, Kerry. Um, in category seven, we also made a commendation for the best work on archives or record keeping produced by a student in an Australian university course. And the commendation goes to Anna Corkill for capturing the crisis, records management obligations for Murrindindi Shire Council's social media communications of emergency responses. And this was in the Graduate Diploma in Information Management at the University of South Australia. The judges noted, this is a very well-written and well-constructed assignment, examining the challenging but important subject of capturing social media in archival and record keeping systems. It offers practical advice based on thorough research on which other organisations can base their own policies and procedures. Congratulations, Anna. And now we move on to the final category, which is category eight, best publication to engage and communicate with clients or potential clients of an Australian archive or archival collection about Australia. And the winner is Rose Barrowcliffe for hashtag Black Lives Matter and Archives in Australia, a blog post published on Indigenous Archives Collective on the 17th of June 2020. And the judges' comments are, this very timely blog post highlights the need for more Indigenous input into the management of archives. The author writes clearly and forcefully about the issues while providing links to other resources. The blog post addresses a need for information for archivists and others about the importance of decolonizing the archives. And that is the end of the awards, and yet we still have seven minutes. So I wonder, Catherine, perhaps you could um, address the audience a little about encouraging people to submit nominations. I would be happy to do that. Um, I would basically ask that everybody, when you see the request for nominations come out early next year, think about the things that you've read in 2021 that have struck you as being interesting, um, have changed your mind, have changed your opinions, have um, provided a detailed understanding of an aspect of practice or process or theory um, that have made a difference in your work um, and nominate those works. Um, sometimes it's really useful to keep a list as you go along through the year of the things that you've read that have been of interest. Um, I'd really love to see some of the things that have popped up in um, the conversation because that's where archives are being discussed quite regularly by archivists and researchers. Um, so that's a category that somebody um, often overlooks in terms of the things that they've been reading and thinks, oh no, that's not necessarily for Amanda Jones. So think about it quite widely. Have you read about archives in a broad range of um, materials? Have you read something that's a, a work of theory that has made a difference to your world? So please think about um, making a nomination. It's not that hard. We don't expect you to write a, a big long essay about it. Tell us why that publication has made a difference to you, why you think it's worthy of Amanda Jones Award. And uh, we really look forward to having lots of nominations to read next year um, because we're, we're people who love to read. Thanks, Kath. Uh, okay. Uh, very quickly, yes, who didn't manage to be seen. Oh, uh, okay. Lord, Rose. Oh, well, so Ro Rose was the winner of category eight. 
Yep, we're just going to bring up the few of the winners who weren't yes. able to be with us. So, so congratulations, Ro Rose. Rose was the writer of the Black Lives Matter and Archives in Australia blog post. Well done. Kerry Wilson. No, Kerry. Anna Corkill, perhaps. Who else have you got? Have you got Gareth? Oh, well, uh, one other thing I'd say is you can nominate your own work or you Ooh. can nominate somebody else's work. Um, you could talk to somebody else about their work and say, I'd like to nominate you and they know it's happening, or you can do it secretly. So, <laughs> um, if, so if you, you can nominate uh, many works. You don't mm -hmm. have to confine yourself to one. And if you have any questions at all, then Catherine is very much the person to ask. And if you don't know how to contact her, you can ask the ASA office. So um, there's a lot of latitude there for people mm -hmm. to participate. Uh, don't be shy. Um, now, uh, James, is there anything else coming up in other chats and things we should address? You don't think so? Well, if that's it, then I think we've come speedily and and on time to the end of our awards ceremony. Thank you so much to everybody for all of the hard work they put into writing these publications and into preparing the nominations. And thank you also to all of the people who submitted no nominations. And this year, unfortunately, were not successful. Don't let it hold you back. Keep on nominating. It's great to have a big field for the judges and keep the judges working. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Absolutely. no, it, look, it's a sign of a healthy profession. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much to everybody uh, for participating in this awards ceremony. Um, it's a little bit remote, but it's just been lovely to be able to see the happy smiling faces of the winners with their certificates. So thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone.